was good was handing we got patrick cc yes the horrifying transformation of doja 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 cat okay look at this thumbnail bro crazy i don't want i i don't want to see this i don't want to see that okay to each their own bro Late, 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 late. Look, look at you, baby, baby. Look at you. You look good. You look great. You look fine. What were you doing? What are you doing? Doja Cat has evolved from a bubbly pink pop princess to an edgy, dark, and honestly confusing artist. Now, celebrities as famous as Doja Cat are held to standards that are near impossible to meet. But what happens when a celebrity just gives up, disregards all societal standards, and starts acting in a way where you have no idea if what you are looking at is real or fake? We have to acknowledge Sheesh. from the beginning that everything in Doja Cat's career- Look at her, bruh. Look at this. The beginning. What? Rear could be one orchestrated marketing stunt, or we could actually be witnessing someone descending into madness. Doja Cat's superpower is that she knows Stop. the internet very well. She knows what type of humor the internet will gravitate to. She knows what will cause controversy, and she has continuously exploited that throughout her career. She obtained this knowledge by being essentially raised by the internet. I definitely didn't like to leave my room. I don't know if I was agoraphobic, but I definitely thought that I was at the time. It was very, very hard for me to go outside. Oh, windy. According to Doja, she would skip school for days at a time, spending endless hours in various online chat rooms. She claims Damn. that she was often a victim of online bullying, but this allowed her to develop a thick skin and join in on the fun through her own offensive rhetoric. Notice how he said that. She went through that and it built tough skin. Bro, I'm telling y'all, I've said this so many times in my videos, I don't know if y'all ever heard me, but if you haven't, I'm gonna say it right now. If somebody is trying to flame you, trying to make fun of you, take what they say and agree with it. Even if you disagree, just take it, bro. Just take it. Whether you agree or disagree, just take it, okay? Oh, you ugly as hell. Your nose crooked. Yeah, I know my crooked. Because you, what you got going on? You know what I'm saying? Oh, you fat as hell. Damn, I know, bro. I could put on the next 30 pounds if I wanted to. I know I'm fat. Bro, just take all that in, bro. They make it fun of you. They saying all this shit. Whether it's in elementary, middle, or high school. After high school, I mean, after each year you graduate, you probably won't even see them. And if you do, after high school, you never gonna see them. Period. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, it's just, like, that shit don't matter. That shit don't matter. I got bullied. A shit ton. A shit ton. Now if somebody tries to roast me, I'm a yeah, thank you, bro. I know. I am that. I am this. Shit don't matter. Shit don't do that don't do nothing. It don't do nothing, bro. You know yourself better than anybody, okay? Don't let that shit get to you crazy, bro. Or you're like upset or depressed and all this. No, just take it. And build that tough skin from the jump. Because as you keep doing that, and the more you keep getting bullied and, and made fun of and all of that, it's just, it's going to unfaze you. It doesn't matter. So I became the person who... I know it's easier said than done as well, but like, really think about that would often make offensive jokes and do things sort of out of the box. From the slapstick comedy of E-Bomb's world to the hyper-connectivity of MySpace, as well as the edgy, politically incorrect depths of 4chan, Doja developed a fascination with internet culture, but this time in her life would later come back to haunt her. I was very into finding underground artists that rapped. It was maybe around 11th grade that I figured that this is what I really wanted to do. Performing and music was all I ever cared about. She eventually dropped out of school at 16 and spent all of her free time Damn. making music and sharing it online. Her track, So High, was uploaded in November of 2012, which would eventually change her life. The only time Doja would leave her house was to network with other musicians in the underground LA scene. Verb S, a rapper from- Bro, she took a big risk for real. Dropping out at 16, bro, when most of the time people graduate at 17, 18, 19, she still had two years on her, bro. She has two years in terms of her age to go to graduate. She dropped out at 16. What's that? That's that is soft. That's sophomore junior. Yeah, sophomore junior year, right? Hey, bro, she took that risk and it worked in her favor, bro.
promoter and radio host in LA helped book Doja's first ever show at an event he founded dubbed The Banana Showcase. He like, your highness, why are you always buying that fly sh why you gotta check them tyrants? And why you shut it down like hydrants? Although most of you know Doja as a pop star, she was initially trying to be a rapper. When they were developing her, I was like a live performance coach and rap coach, Verbies recalled. I would play her hella hip hop videos and we'd freestyle. She was phenomenal. She didn't really need me, but I just happened to be there. Yeti Beats was a producer that heard so high and was blown away. He connected Doja with industry executives, resulting in Doja signing with Kimosabe Records, an imprint of RCA Records founded by record producer and songwriter Dr. Mm. Luke while she was just 17 years old. Crazy. This deal also came with a temporary artist Crazy. management partnership with Rock Nation. Through Kimo Sabe, Doja released her debut EP, Purr, with the track So High being re-released as her solo commercial debut single. It seemed like Doja was That's about to explode wild. into the mainstream, but signing with Dr. Luke was a mistake she could have never foreseen. In 2014, Dr. Luke gained widespread media attention after Kesha filed a lawsuit against him. She accused Dr. Luke of sexual, physical, and emotional abuse over the course of several years, starting when she was 18. She also claimed that Dr. Luke was intentionally sabotaging her career. Kesha also sought to be released from her recording contract with Kimosabe Records. This case was huge news, with hashtag free Kesha becoming- so Dr. Luke, if you really are the control abuser you claim you're not, why haven't you just let her go? Good point. Kesha had the chance to get her injunction, but Sony stopped it to work on K3 because they're hungry for money. That's what comes with signing with labels, bruh. That's why you hear, yo, I literally, this morning, I just watched the interview between Tyga and Lil Wayne. And Lil Wayne, one, one who's been in the game for years, has come out and said that he's noticed a lot of up-and-coming artists not signing because of the freedom that they have, but also the amount of money that they are making not being signed. That says a lot, bro. Before, he even said this too, before it used to be people aiming to get signed by any means. Let's get signed. I want to get signed. What, comp what, what, what label is going to sign me? This is this is the third. That was the goal. I feel like now the goal is to do everything independent and it just have your own shit, bro. And do it how you want, when you want. Get paid the full amount that you would. Compared to if you were signed, because they have to take a percentage and all that. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy, bro. So, yeah, I feel like nowadays with artists, the goal is to, you know, blow up, explode, um, become mainstream, all while being independent. You know what I'm saying? And I respect that. I really do. Becoming a movement on social media. Coincidentally, Doja Cat's career came to a screeching halt as soon as Kesha's She's lawsuit fine, was filed. Bro. Rapper Wale wanted to take Doja on his 30-city Simply Nothing tour across the USA, giving her some much-needed exposure to a mainstream audience, but she had to pull out because she didn't have the support of her label. Now, Doja never made any allegations yeah. against Dr. Luke, but is it a stretch to assume that Dr. Luke was more focused on fighting this lawsuit than helping his new signee with her career? Because Doja took a three-and-a-half-year break from releasing music. In the music industry, they call this being shelved, which is when a label signs you, holds you in a contract, but doesn't do anything to help your career. Career. And like, what's the point of that at that point? What's the point of being signed at that point? You're being shelved, as he said. They got you, they signed you, and nothing. Now, within all that time that she was shelved, she probably would have been already in the mainstream, bro. You know what I'm saying? She probably would have went on that tour with Wale. She didn't need the support from her label. After that tour, She's gaining all this exposure and, and recognition. Who's to say? It's just, bro, things could have went, I feel like, a lot quicker. I'm going to just say quicker, right? If, um, if she didn't sign, you know? Metaphorically putting you on a shelf to collect dust. She kept money rolling in by doing whatever live performance is possible, like doing a mini tour with The Felius London in 2015, as well as a short tour with Lizzo in 2017. Doja Yeesh. even turned down a feature on Billie Eilish's 2017 hit single, Bellyache. Doja even turned down a feature on Billie Eilish's 20. 655 million, bro. Now, this is, a, I'm gonna say two things. Imagine if she was on this, right? It probably would have done the same amount, probably less, or probably more. Okay, because sometimes 
uh, a feature, you know, somebody wants to feature you on their song and it's like, you don't go with it, right? And this shit happens. Imagine she was on this. But then again, you can also counter that and say, what if Doja was on this and it wasn't as good as, as it is without Doja? You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like a hit or miss. It's a 50-50. But like just the fact that she you know, had that opportunity to hop on this song that has 655 million views, bro. A million, two million views. That shit on YouTube sets you. It, it brings some good attention on you, bro. Really good intention. You know what I'm saying? Attention. Never mind 655 M's. 2017 hit single, Bellyache. Fans would see Doja often on Periscope Live cooking up songs in her bedroom, but she had no intentions on releasing them until 2018. Her comeback in 2018 involved her ditching the rapper career path and aesthetic. She instead followed the typical pop star formula of selling sex through music. She debuted tracks like Roll With Us, Go To Town, and Candy, along with her 13-track album. Bro, look at, the, look at these cover arts. Debuted tracks like Roll With Us. Simple. Simple cover art. Go To Town. Simple. And can sample, bro. These look good for artwork, for the cover art of the song, bro. These look really good, and they're just they're simple. I like that. Along with her 13-track album Amala, Even but a lot one. of these songs fell on deaf ears. Kimosabe Records didn't do any marketing for her, didn't get her interviews, nor were they putting her on major festivals. She was watching her career fly by and reached a moment where she had nothing left to lose. One night on an Instagram live with her core group of 60 fans watching, she made a masterpiece meme that would change her life. Producer Troy Noka sent her a sample of Wes Montgomery's Polka Dots and Moonbeams, asking her to make a beat for his album. At the time, she'd just received a cow costume in the mail. Doja hopped on Instagram Live and began writing Moo Ooh. with her fans. Ha. Six hours later, Doja and her fans wrote a song about her being a cow. But the silly song needed a silly <laughs> music video. I opened up Photo Booth on my- Bro, a lot would say that this was the first time they probably uh, noticed Doja or noticed Doja blowing up you know what i'm saying my first what was my first ever doja cat song that i heard of bro? because i remember this dropping i just never bothered to go watch it i seen the memes that's about it i never went to go watch it i never wanted to figure out what it was or how it sounded none of that what was the first doja cat song that i it was one of her something after this it was like a little bit after or way after this i'm not gonna lie my laptop and use the green screen feature with a green sheet that I hadn't used since I was 12 that was buried in the depths of my closet. I tacked it to a wall with a hammer right over my mirror and used some LED Christmas lights to light everything. The crappy lighting and terrible quality green screen combined with a song that is intentionally bad was the perfect thing to release in summer of 2018. When we were at the it's peak so of the fire. Lil Pump, Bad Baby, Lil Xan, Boon Gang, Whoa Vicky, Supreme Patty, Lil Tay, Instagram clout wave, Doja Cat's Moo music video fit right in this universe because people thought she was just a a new quirky YouTuber who had a green screen and got bored. The music video for Moo garnered over 5 million I'm views in two weeks and went extremely viral on every social media platform. But when people looked deeper, they realized she was an extremely talented pop artist with a record deal who had an entire album she just released a few months ago. Most people who go viral are not ready for a full-blown music career. <laughs> Doja was more prepared than ever, and she was able to immediately capitalize on it. But it's first, gorgeous, she had bro. to make some apologies. Some of her old tweets resurfaced of her using the F slur, to which she immediately responded by admitting she has used the word over 15,000 times in her life, I then saying, this. I don't think I hate gay people, gay is okay. Obviously, this didn't go over well, and she issued a more formal apology the next day. This had no impact on her career and momentum, but it would not be the last time she would have to apologize for her past. Now that she went viral on her own, her label decided to support her. She embarked on a 23... Now they want to support. They want to support because she, she she making money. She making money. They want they want a piece of that. Now they want to support. City tour one month later and was finally getting interviews from Billboard, Genius, and Vlad TV. She rolled out a big single alongside Rico Nasty called Tia, Tia Tamara. Tamara. I think this was the one. Tia Tamara. 
Yeah, I think this was the one I listened to first. Which maintained a lighthearted and fun approach to her music. Doja understood that fans loved the satire and goofiness of Moo, but she ultimately wanted to be taken seriously as a musician. A lot of artists that blow up off memes have a hard time being taken seriously. But the music industry was craving more female talent, and Doja was ready to fill that niche. Her debut single, Juicy, alongside Tyga, debuted at number 83 on the... This was a, one of them, too. I think I, I reacted to this one. Juicy. Right? They dropped the video. Yes, I reacted to this shit. Fire. Hot 100. Fire. The first entry on the charts. It would eventually peak at number 43 due to various TikTok trends associated with the track. Her second studio album, Hot Pink, was an overtly girly, bubbly, sexy record that complemented her fun energy while still remaining professional. Say So wasn't rolled out as a single but sparked a dance trend on TikTok. All the biggest influencers like Charlie D'Amelio and James Charles helped skyrocket this song. The popularity prompted a remix featuring Nicki Minaj. As it gained Nicki. steam, she tweeted, If Say So hits number one, I'll show you guys my boobs really hard. This tweet made headlines, <laughs> some making fun of her desperation to go number one, but then it worked. Say So peaked at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and achieved a Guinness World Record for the first female rap duo to reach number one on the U- Sheesh, first female rap duo to reach number one. That's actually absurd, bro. That's actually absurd. US singles chart. I just realized I have to show my boobs real hard. Uh, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. I did play you. <laughs> I'm not showing my boobs real hard, man. You got fucking played. People <laughs> online were furious that she broke her promise. She's mad. What'd y'all expect? What'd y'all expect? Why, why, why are you mad over this? Why are you mad that she's not showing anything after saying it? Y'all should. What'd you guys expect? Literally. Messing with the simps. Trust me, the simps will overpower her and eventually expose something bad about her. This commenter couldn't have been more right. A few days later, a Twitter user resurfaced an old video of Doja in what they claimed was an alt-right chat room. On a website called Tiny Chat, Doja is seen wiggling and writhing while making sexual noises and advances towards other people in the chat before dropping the hard R. Her shirt reminds me of a baby not only was she acting really strange, but the other people on the call were using blatantly racist rhetoric. This was Doja's response. In this video, I'm being completely f***ing blackout drunk and completely f***ing dumb. In regards to people being racist in the chat room, this was her response. You know what I do understand is that there is racism that happens across tiny chat, And there is racism that happens across Instagram. There's racism that happens across Twitter. Mute, mute, this mute, mute. happens everywhere. It just happens more on Tiny Chat because it's not as monitored. When you see racist on Tiny Chat, mute. it's because people aren't paying attention. I've seen it, and I've I I know that I've been targeted by it. But the narrative that it's a white supremacist chat is completely incorrect. But it didn't stop there. Yeah. Fans also discovered a 2015 song Doja recorded called Din Do Nuffin. Din Do Nuffin is a term that originated on poll, which is an abbreviation for politically incorrect, an anonymous board on 4chan dedicated to current events and political discussion. This board has a reputation as a breeding ground what? for fringe beliefs and unapologetically grotesque takes. The term didn't do nothing is derived from the phrase didn't do nothing, a plea of innocence often used in reference to unarmed black men killed by police. Oh. The term was used to mock and criticize oh. the black community during the Black Lives Matter protests. Hashtags like Doja cat is over party and only began trending on Twitter. People believe that the chat room video and Oops. controversial song indicated a pattern of Doja's behavior. Not long after these conversations started, Doja issued a formal apology in which she acknowledged her involvement in the chat rooms, but also debunked the narrative that she's anti She also jumped on an Instagram live for 30 minutes where she gave a concise explanation. When I used it, it was because I was in chat rooms all the time and I was kind of locked away and I was always on there just dealing with people coming at me left and right talking about <clears throat> different s s terms after another. The term that I used in the song uh, is one that I learned that day. So people were calling me at left and right, left and right, and I used it in a song. And it was to kind of 
take back and 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 just say f you to those people. But again, this would not be the last time Doja's internet past would come back to haunt her. Fortunately for Doja, her ever-growing list of accomplishments shined bright over any controversy she endured. Although her Hot Pink tour was postponed, she performed at the 2020 MTV Music Awards where she won the award for Best New Artist. Following performances on both The Tonight Show and Jimmy Kimmel Live, her feature on the album track Motive from Ariana Grande's 2020 album Positions peaked at number 32 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, becoming both her highest debut and second ever Top 40 entry. Bro, Doja had a run, bro. Before everything that's going on now with her and her, uh, you know, changing her, her looks and stuff and all that extra stuff, she has been on a run in terms of music, bro. You know what I'm saying? And like, I don't know, bro. You just, when it comes to her musically, you can't, you can't hate on it, bro. She's good. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know, bro. I enjoy her music. Probably not the new stuff, obviously, but like stuff before, before uh, all this change that she's been going through and stuff. I don't know. Like they got two, three songs on the radio that constantly play that are hers. You know what I'm saying? So obviously she's doing well for herself and shit. She does have hits, but like before this change, like, like that ass, like 2020, 2021 before that as well was just bangers, bro. Later that year, Doja performed at the 2020 MTV Europe Music Awards, where she won the award for Best New Act. She went on to win the New Artist of 2020 and New Artist of the Year at the 46 People's Choice Awards and the 2020 American Music Awards, Crazy. respectively. Billboard ranked Doja Cat number 5 on both the Top New Artist of 2020 and Top Female Artist of 2020 charts. She ranked a top Rolling Stones list of the 10 biggest breakthrough artists of 2020, following a 300% increase in her on-demand audio streams in the US. Damn. Forbes also named Doja one of the top breakout stars of 2020 while including her on the annual 30 under 30 list. She was also nominated for three different awards at the 63rd annual Grammys. In 2021, she continued to absolutely dominate. She toned down the bright, colorful costumes and pink dyed hair for a muted, mature aesthetic. She released several hits including Best Friend featuring Saweetie, 34 plus 35 with Megan Thee Stallion and Ariana Grande, as well as Streets, all of which peaked within the top 20 on the Billboard Hot 1. You see all these, these accomplishments and recognition, bro? Killing it. Straight killing it, bro. 100 chart. In the spring of 2021, Doja released Kiss Me More featuring SZA. This Wait, is is Streets, Streets. Is that is that the song uh Is it like you like you and then on TikTok the trend was uh it was like the women and then it would when the beat drops on the song, it would be like a, a red a red look to the video, red lighting, and then the women are just like up against the wall and shit, whatever. If that's the song, that is my song, bro. That song is so fucking vibey to me. One of my favorites out of Doja Cat. I don't care, bro. On the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Vibe In the spring of 2021, fuck. Doja released Kiss Me More featuring SZA. This collaboration reached top five in 18 different Jeez. countries, received critical acclaim, and captured Doja her first Grammy for Best Pop Duo slash Group Performance. But with all the success, <laughs> she claims she didn't enjoy it. I don't have any new music. I just have fun and like just jam and like make some shit. Like I haven't done that in maybe five years feels like yeah i made my album put it out but that's like a requirement like i had i have to make that like i had to make that album it's easy to understand yeah, musicians can experience burnout due to demanding schedules, late yeah. night performances, long rehearsals, frequent travel, repetitive interviews. There is an intense pressure to consistently deliver high quality performances, whether in live settings or in the studio. Her saying she had to make her album led people to believe there was drama with her and Dr. Luke. Maybe she felt a lack of- Drama or not, she just, they have to. They're under a contract, they have to do certain things, probably in a certain amount of time or within a certain time and she had to doesn't necessarily mean they have beef you know but that could be a possibility control over her career her saying that she hasn't made music for fun led people to believe her label wanted her to make formulaic pop music so they can bring in millions this pressure combined with the endless amount yep. of scrutiny and negativity online having to constantly apologize for wrongdoings likely made doja feel like this whole music industry is smoke and mirrors 
her potential descent into madness was beginning. Are you drinking water? In March yes. of 2020, Doja traveled to Paraguay yes. for their annual Asuncionico festival, which was canceled upon arrival due to severe weather conditions which included flooding and thunderstorms. Doja's hotel location was leaked and fans, eager to see Damn. their favorite musician, piled up outside the hotel hoping for her to come out. Eventually, fans grew frustrated when Doja failed to acknowledge them. What Drake doing there, huh? Why did I look like Drake? <laughs> by the hotel hoping for her to come out. Eventually, fans grew frustrated when Doja failed to acknowledge them, both in person and on social media. While fans aren't entitled to Doja's time outside of when she's scheduled to perform, her seemingly self-absorbed tweets that Hold on, we spent a whole day in front of the hotel in the rain and you never came out or said a word and you think we could go again the next day. First of all, no one told y'all to stand outside the fucking, outside her hotel and rain, while it's raining and no one told y'all to do that. Y'all decided to do that. Now, yes, it would have been nice to, for Doja Cat to acknowledge her supporters. Hi, right, how y'all doing? Boo, 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 and then keep it pushing. But no one told you to stand outside the hotel and it's raining. And no one's telling you to do it again. Cut that shit. I guess by another time I did get ready that day for the show. It was a nice every day to put on. The following day caused a justified uproar on social media. The next day, Doja checked out of her hotel and tweeted, There was a storm in Paraguay. The show got canceled. When I left the next morning, there wasn't one person outside the hotel waiting for me. After a flurry of backlash, she said, I don't give a Followed by, the ain't for me, so I'm out. Y'all take care before changing her Twitter name to I Quit. Her reaction to this situation that was totally out of her control either proves one, she is legitimately sick and tired of the pressure of this industry, or two, she is just a snobby, childish brat ungrateful for her career. Doja's response to criticism has always been the same since day one. She would initially respond sarcastically, and when that response garnered more criticism, she'd finally take the situation seriously and issue a formal apology. However, the secondary apologies always felt insincere, since her genuine feelings toward the topic were always displayed during those initial responses. Which brings us to our next controversy where she made a huge deal out of nothing. Doja DM'd Noah Schnapp, the 17-year-old star of Stranger Things, to get the attention of Joseph Quinn, another cast member who she had been lusting over on Twitter. <clears throat> Noah posted the DMs thinking it was a silly joke only for Doja to get really angry about it. That Noah did that. Joke only for wait, 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 wait. who she had been lusting over on Twitter. Noah posted the DMs thinking Thinking it was a silly joke. I will post the DMs. Okay. First, that's corny. Joke or not, why would you even post this, bro? This whole like exposing DMs and text messages is fucking corny to me, bro. It's so corny to me. Literally. Only for Doja to get really angry about it. That Noah did that like went and posted a private conversation between me and him right is so unbelievably like socially unaware and whack you know what i mean like that's like borderline snake that's like damn near bro you know what i'm saying like what was the reason for you to post that no one asked for it you didn't have to you know what i'm saying no one said post this bro is is dope or or Look, Doja's hitting me up for so and so. Like, who cares, bro? The only person who probably should have seen those text messages, those DMs, was the man she was trying to get at, which is what's his face? Joseph. That's it. That's it. The world didn't have to see that. But if you were going to post it or send it anywhere, send it to Joseph. Like. And whack. You know what I mean? Like, that's like borderline <laughs> snake. That's like weasel. That's what I'm saying. It's not that deep. It's just it's that not, he's no, like... it's not that deep. It's really not. But it's like there was no reason to post it to begin with. And like I don't know, bro. It's like like that's like that's like Drake DMing me for whatever reason, right? And I post it to the public. Oh my god, Drake DM like huh? First of all, for one, that's going to push him the fuck away. Delete, unfollow me, delete the messages, all of that. He's not going to fuck with me anymore. That's just private. It's between, it's one-on-one, -on -one, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, and two, motherfuckers don't need to know everything. They don't need to know that so-and-so liked their picture or so-and-so posted you. You know what I'm saying? They don't need to know that, bro. 
I, I don't know. That's just me. Like a very dumb kid. Doja assumed people would automatically take her side since Noah exposed their private messages. However, many people saw it as her trashing an innocent 17 year old. What she said in the DMs was already public knowledge. And when Twitter users told her. Wait, what? This will be clear on his end both sides. Personally, they don't think. She should have messaged him in the first place, given the fact that he's only 17, but I also don't think he should have posted a private comment. So I understand both of them. Um. Okay, 17 message 10 she messaged him about somebody else now if it was her messaging him and he's 17 and yeah that's a little weird you know what i'm saying how old you is 20 mid 20s don't you care what you're doing okay um and the, the whole private convo yeah 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 and 17 year old what she said in the dms was already public knowledge and went to public knowledge Public knowledge. Twitter users told her that she was overreacting to this small conflict. Wait, wait, wait. It was already public knowledge. And when Twitter users told her that I want to read. No one was managing with DMs when he posted they were all laughing. So I give you a concern is why was she giving such a like they need to be serious? That she was overreacting to this small conflict, she played the victim and responded in an insincere, sarcastic tone. Y'all are so cringe and lame, and nobody wants to hang with you. That's why y'all be on here unironically writing replies to that makes you mad. Doja is clearly fed up with the negativity that comes with fame. Whether her controversies are self-inflicted or not, she was done with the expectations, done with petty drama, done with apologies, done trying to appease anyone but herself. And now it was her turn to control the narrative. She started mm. by shaving her head bald. Yep. All right. Uh, well, what, what do you say? Taking the hater, pretty much taking the hater serious, stuff like that. I mean, bro, it gets to a point where, like, when you constantly seeing and hearing all this shit from other people who really don't fucking know you, they really don't know you, and they just they they're hating, they're criticizing you, they they they're judging you, talking shit about you, telling you what to do, telling you how to do it. It's like that shit gets so fucking annoying, bro. So I can understand her frustration on being done with apologies, being done with this, this in the third, staying in her own lane type shit. Just I can understand that, you know what I'm saying? Because it literally it gets to the point where. Just, just imagine you dealing with what she deals with. Constantly seeing and hearing other people talk about you. Give their two cents in when it's not really fucking needed or even asked for. Them trying to tell you how to do certain things. Or say things a certain way. That shit gets annoying, bro. The dead ass gets annoying. So I, I understand her frustration. Alt. Then she went on Instagram Live and shaved her eyebrows. During the live, she said, I feel like I was never supposed to have hair anyway. Whenever female celebrities randomly shave their head, people quickly assume that they have gone crazy, especially after the world witnessed Britney Spears infamously shave her head while having a mental breakdown in 2007. Yeah. But when she attended Paris Fashion that. Week, people second-guessed her intentions. <laughs> Doja collaborated with makeup artist Pat McGrath to create a strapless red dress while she was covered head-to-toe in 30,000 crimson red crystals. The look took almost five Five hours to complete crazy. and while some people shrugged it off as just another crazy fashion choice for the sake of shock value others made illuminati conspiracy theories that she was imitating lucifer and this was nothing more than symbolism for the demonic realities of the entertainment industry you could even say doja's fashion antics are similar to the many stunts lady gaga pulled back in the early 2000s then again they said that gaga was in the illuminati as well little did we know putting together a creative or potentially shocking ensemble for fashion week became one of the least bizarre things Doja does. <laughs> Doja announced that she planned on returning to her rap roots for her upcoming fourth studio <clears throat> album. She wanted to diverge from the pink and soft things and pop and glittery sounds that defined her career up until now. Her song Attention piqued some interest in the rap world, but fans who'd become accustomed to Doja's pop records were expressing their disappointment on social media, leading to Doja tweeting, My comment section on IG used to only be positivity because I was doing what everyone wanted me to do and I love that I can see through all the bull now. She clarified that it wasn't anything personal, but was discontent cranking out digestible pop hits for children on Twitter to get into fights about. She tweeted, Planet Her and Hot Pink were cash grabs, and y'all fell for it. Now I can go disappear somewhere and touch grass with my loved ones on an island while y'all weep for mediocre pop. People were feeling Sheesh. regret for having ever supported her music, but this is the most honest thing Doja has ever said. Most very honest. 
As bad as it sounds, bro, it's literally the very honest thing she could have done, bro, and said. Because, bro, a lot of things, like maybe at the time when she dropped these, it didn't seem like cash grabs. But, bro, the amount of shit celebrities and influencers are trying to put out and sell to the public that is point blank in your face cash grabs. And people still fall for it. Like, come on. Literally, bro. She literally came out and kept it real. You know what I'm saying? But when somebody is actually trying to sell you some cash grab type of shit, people are still falling for it. They see right through the cash grab tendencies, I guess you can say. Intentions, whatever. You feel me? Bro, come on. Most of the music you love is a highly formulaic, soulless product that is scientifically engineered for you to love it. Look at what it took for Doja to blow up, making the worst <laughs> song possible to get attention. It is totally believable to think Doja just did whatever she could. Gotta be me, bro. Fucking a dinosaur, bro. King New. Roar. Head ass, boy. What are you talking about? But to make some money and be set for life. This is metaphorically what people refer to as selling their so soul. Their but soul. Dojo was doing more than metaphors. She showed off a new tattoo of a scaled animal figure crossbred with female attributes. The photo went viral on social media, with many calling Dojo's tattoo demonic. One fan expressed their concern, writing, Used to love you, but you clearly sold your soul to the devil. Unfollow. Doja replied, whatever helps you sleep at night. She'd post another tattoo, an antelope skull on her wrist. Then she would tattoo a bat skeleton on her back. The allegations regarding her being indoctrinated into the Illuminati or practicing demonic worship only increased as time went on. Yep. Her Instagram became filled with cryptic messages and spooky videos to roll out her album. She posted very unflattering <laughs> photos of her. <laughs> Bro. The, bro, the amount of pictures of people posting like this, bro. I see it all over TikTok. The people I follow on social media do pictures like this. I'd be crying and laughing, bro. Because, like, look at this angle. What is this? <laughs> what is this? I, I can't help but laugh, bro. I herself. really can't. Her album was called Scarlet. She posted what people thought was the album cover, which consisted of her drenched in with a stripped down free symbol. She also announced a multi-city tour, which people called a show. She'd post nah. videos of herself crawling in the shadows, photo shoots where she was drenched in and selfies of dripping down her nose. She even posted a selfie wearing a shirt with an image of Sam Hyde, an infamous internet troll slash comedian who often incorporates racist or anti-semitic humor in his bits. The image of Hyde brandishing a on Doge's t-shirt is a common meme on social you media covered. following mash her song, Paint the Town Red, was her leaning more into this overtly art style. The song topped the charts in 19 countries. It became Doja's second single and first as a solo artist to top the Billboard Hot 100. This is one of the songs on the radio, constantly playing. The boy was in a rental for the past two weeks. The Bluetooth did not work, so I was cooked and stuck on radio tunes, bro. This was playing. Damn near back to back. I could pretty much say back to back, bro. It was like her song, two more songs, and then here she comes again with this song. They was milking this shit on the radio, bro. They probably still are. 100. Paint the Town Red made history by becoming the first solo female rap song in Spotify history to top Crazy. the platform's global and US top 50 charts and the fastest solo female rap song to amass 100 million streams. Turns Sheesh. out devil imagery is still an effective marketing strategy. If the signs weren't obvious enough though, Doja began teasing a promotional single titled Demons. In promotional photos uploaded to Instagram, Doja can be seen dressed up as a the music video further cemented Doja's transformation from the quirky girl right. in a cow suit to something straight out of a horror film. Fuck Some people that. are praising Doja ah. that she is finally being herself. Fuck she's that. finally free of all the expectations of the music industry and doesn't have to live up to- Listen bro, she's being herself, good for her. You know what I'm saying? Not for me. I ain't with it, you know what I'm saying? But she doing her thing, this is what she like to do. Good for her bro, because at the end of the day, everybody should be able to be themselves and do what they want and say what they want and do how they want all, all of that okay all the above live your life carefree 
enjoy it you only have one life okay agree or disagree it don't matter my opinion don't matter yours don't matter it does it'll it'll never matter to her she out here living her life doing whatever she wants and that's the goal everybody should have is just do whatever you want without having to worry about anything or anyone unattainable beauty standards. Some people think what Doja is doing here is mocking the people who think an artist has to sell their soul to make it into the industry. You have to remember she is an expert internet troll, crawling out from the deepest depths of 4chan. She knows all of this imagery will cause controversy. She knows she will get news coverage and have outraged parents calling for her music and concerts to be banned. She knows there will be conspiracy theories regardless, so she could be ironically presenting herself as a devil worshipper to make people think she has gone insane. Is this an extremely corny and over use art style for artists? Yes. Is it actually an Illuminati PSYOP? Maybe. Did it work? Not really. Doja's fourth studio album. I mean, didn't work, but it worked in, in her bank account. But she getting a fucking bag, bro. Okay. All, all this talk, all this attention, all this controversial images and looks and, and, and lyrics and everything she's doing, it's just bringing more money to her fucking pockets, bro. Album Scarlet debuted at number 4 on the Hot 200, <coughs> moving 72,000 album equivalent units. In comparison, Planet Her debuted at number 2 and sold 109,000 units. Damn. Despite being on track to be the highest selling female pop star in the world, Doja potentially scared her audience. Scared her audience away. Yeah, bro. I ain't fond of this new look she got going on in sound, but... Besides all that, before... Before the change... Before what she got going on now, she had the hits. Okay? I mean, you could say she has hits now because, you know what I'm saying? She got these songs playing on VP, all that. But back in the day, bro, that, that was the Doja Cat I enjoyed personally. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, again, like I said, my opinion to her, never going to matter. Your opinion to her, never going to matter to her. Okay? My opinion to her, for you guys and vice versa, it's not going to matter. Okay, it's all it's all just opinions. Uh but yeah, I'm surprised he touched on this, bro. No bullshit. I'm glad he did too. People are trying to make it seem like Hollywood brainwash her into making her do weird shit for attention where she literally got famous for twerking in a cow costume. I think anyone who has familiar with her before knows she was never a bubbly pink pop princess. She's always been odd. Crazy part is she is self aware as fuck. You can literally hear in her music that she's talking about all of the controversial antics and how people feel about her in the music. Paint the town red, for example. Uh, my favorite Doja arc is the one where she called her biggest fan weirdos, and then they started acting super weird, and she was like, "See what I mean?" <laughs> she isn't getting weird. She's just getting comfortable enough to behave like she did online IRL. At least that's what it looks like. She she doing her shit, bro. She 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 wants to do this. She's doing literally whatever the fuck she wants and saying whatever the fuck she wants. And like I said, for everybody, being able to do and say what you want in life should be a goal of yours. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not saying this type of do whatever you want, but literally just whatever you want, bro. You no, know, just anything. Ah, uh, W video. Shout out to Patrick. Let me know what you guys thought. That's my reaction. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe if you haven't. I'm out.